I'm so glad that education is a trending topic right now because there are so many things I want to say. The first is that, yes, a lot of people cannot read and a lot of people cannot comprehend or understand things or even write. Your son or your daughter is in this intervention class because they are reading at third and second grade levels. They cannot understand informational text. They do not understand literature. They cannot debunk or debrief. They can't summarize a, a simple paragraph. I'm not even trying to be funny, but these kids are, I'ma just say this. I teach seventh grade, they are still performing on the fourth grade level. To go and gift books for kids that are around you, read them with kids, um, every time there's a chance to celebrate a holiday. So apparently Gen Z can't read? <laughs> Hey guys, what's up? It's Emergency and welcome, welcome back to my channel. And today we are back and talking about something that I've been seeing a lot on the internet as of recently, especially on Twitter and TikTok and, and other social media platforms where Gen Z and honestly some of Gen Alpha are getting a lot of can't read allegations. No Leah Michelle. There seems to be a rising issue being voiced by educators around the country from an academic sense and then just from like a day-to-day -day internet user sort of sense of Gen Z, specifically younger Gen Z and older Gen Alpha, not really learning or being able to keep up with what is expected for them at their grade level. And then from an internet side of things, just from the way that different internet scandals, media stories, and the way that things are just portrayed online, especially in recent years, shows that media literacy is just down as a whole across the board. And in this video, we're gonna talk about that and really get to the root of if there's any merit to these claims of decreased media literacy and just, <laughs> Gen Z not being able to read or do math or really keep up with anything like they used to back in the day. And then getting into some reasonings and explanations for why this may be, what's causing this. And then we'll take a little dip into talking about the attention economy and the Gen Z millennial debate that has been raging on for the past couple of years. But before we do that, if you are new around here, hi, I'm Rumi, and you are watching Emer Gen Z, a little series that I have on this channel where we talk about all things Gen Z and media, pop culture, and just Gen Z stuff in general. I also post other commentary content, tier lists, show reviews, the whole nine. So if any of that sounds of interest to you, then make sure to hit that subscribe button so that you don't miss out on any of the content that I have coming out on this channel. And while you're at it, leave a like on this video because it helps out so, so much with the YouTube algorithm like you don't understand. And also while you're at it, if you want to see more lifestyle content, so things like fashion, or if you just want to keep up with what I do when I'm not on here on YouTube, you can follow me on my other socials here at Emergency on TikTok, Twitter, and Instagram. But let's get into this topic, shall we? So like I was saying before, there have been multiple educators, whether they be teachers, professors, or just people that work in education that have been noting and vocalizing their concerns with the classes that they have been teaching and specifically with their students' performance in class. I'm not even trying to be funny, but these kids are, I'ma just say this. I teach seventh grade, they are still performing on the fourth grade level. I don't care how you flip it, turn it, swing it, swing it, swindle it. They still performing on the fourth grade level. Ain't nobody talking about how they just keep moving, passing them on. They just keep passing them on, 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 passing them on. I can put as many zeros in this grade book as I want to. They're gonna move that child to the eighth grade next year. And why don't y'all know that y'all kids not performing on their grade level? Why y'all don't know this? Why y'all don't know? Talk about it. Let's unpack. Because y'all be quick to talk about, oh, the teacher this, the teacher this, the teacher. It's your job, it's your job, baby. I just got here 30 days ago. She was performing on the fourth grade level since fourth grade which has rightfully raised a lot of flags for a lot of people because like whenever the rhetoric of like, oh my God, the youth is failing us, like the kids are not all right, goes viral, like people tend to really run with that. And it truly is genuinely concerning to hear that kids are moving through the education system without fully getting a grasp of what they're learning and the material that they need to move on to the next grade level. Because like people have been mentioning online and in the comments of these videos, if this keeps on happening and students are being continuously pushed throughout the education system and throughout middle school, high school, and college without ever really getting a grasp on the fundamental of what they need to actually go through these levels. It's gonna set us up for failure for when in 10, 15, 20 years, we have that population of people going to specialized careers, like being your doctor, being your lawyer, being your accountant, being governmental figures, and things like that because no one really challenged or encouraged them to do a little better or actually really learn the material that they were supposed to be learning in school while they were in school. And the question that a lot of people have been asking since these educators have come forward is like, why is this the case? Like if you see these students struggling or not being at grade level, 
why are you as the teacher not doing anything to step in? And this is my take on it. I feel like while yes, it is the teacher's job to help students and to prepare these students for the grade level that they are at, I think it's also kind of a stretch to ask teachers to be able to compensate for years and years of children being left behind while still trying to teach them the things that they're actually supposed to learn in their grade level to be ready for the next grade level. On top of the fact that classrooms nowadays are only getting bigger, there are fewer and fewer educators in the system. And to be honest, teachers just aren't paid enough to do all that, especially when they're paying out of pocket already for a lot of their school supplies and stuff to do their job. I think in this scenario, it's important to look at the higher structures at play, like the school boards, the standardized curriculums that a lot of public schools have, as well as the parents as well. I don't feel like this falls squarely on the shoulders of the teachers because it really does take a village to raise and educate children. And I feel like especially now as someone who's a part of Gen Z and went through the education system, I could say confidently, at least the way that I experienced education through like the common curriculum just was not helpful and beneficial to actually learning, especially in an environment where there were like 20 or so kids in a class with one single teacher because people don't all learn the same way for one. And two, it's just so difficult to be able to accommodate to so many people in the current way that education is being set up. And with the way that things have been going with education nationally, outside of the control, from a higher up perspective, I see that things are only going to get worse. But let's talk about some factors that contribute to this from a Gen Z perspective. For one, I feel like the whole structure and concept of education has been completely shifted because of the pandemic. Like I was in college during the lockdown eras when classes were primarily online and that completely shifted everything for me when I was in college. Like I can't imagine like being in high school or even younger doing classes and just school as a whole online because I feel like during that era things were either super hard or like super easy. Like I remember complaining, I think some videos are actually up on the channel of me complaining about the amount of busy work that was given during that era just to say like, okay, we've done it. That wouldn't necessarily be challenging or like really necessary, but would be done just to get the grade and to pass us through. And there'd be that section of the education system under lockdown. And then there would be the complete opposite where it's like something where it's like a paper or assignment or whatever that's like super difficult and definitely needs more explaining and context behind it. But we just never be given that and we're just expected to figure it out, which is a whole nother issue. And like I said, that was difficult to navigate when I was in college where an independent study and I guess education is more encouraged. But in like high school, middle school, where you're kind of dependent on your teacher to figure out how to do stuff. I can't imagine how difficult that must have been. If you were in high school during the lockdowns and remember that experience, let me know in the comments, like how was that for you? Because that just sounds like hell. But yeah, the pandemic definitely impacted education for a lot of Gen Z. So of course that would translate to like post lockdown times because you have this whole two to three year era where people are just lagging behind because they didn't really get the education that they were supposed to. Then you have things like the rise of AI with ChatGPT and other artificial intelligence things that help students that have caused an increase in like school cheating through like papers and like assignments and stuff like that. And since we have intelligence to essentially write, comprehend, and otherwise do things for us, it's easy to see how all those things add up into the situation that we've gotten ourselves in today. Where we have a whole group of us as Gen Z that don't read because they don't need to, they don't write as well because they don't need to, and don't critically think because social media has gotten us accustomed to having any content that we want to see or think we might want to see be served to us through algorithms on platforms like Twitter, TikTok, and even here on YouTube. Which brings me to my next point, media literacy, girl. <laughs> It's time to be real. I say this with peace and love, but we as Gen Z, we as a generation are media illiterate. Like media literacy is at an all time low. And I'm guilty of this sometimes too. Like the girlies don't be reading in between the lines like they used to. But before we get into more of that, let's take a pause and let's define what media literacy is so we're all on the same page. According to Google, media literacy is the ability to critically analyze stories presented in the mass media and to determine their accuracy or credibility. And I hate to say this, but I feel like a lot of our media literacy has been dumbed down to the Twitter community notes. Like that is, that is our critical think. Like the fact that that's becoming such a strong tool to really combat mis and disinformation and to figure out if something is real or not. I mean, of course, like it isn't completely our fault because with like the rise of deep fakes and like I was saying before, AI generated images, narratives and things like that is becoming increasingly more difficult to discern which is which. But when a story comes out and one and one are equaling three, I think that we need to try a little bit harder to understand for ourselves that something might not be adding up, you know? And I feel like that has definitely bled into 
the social media culture so much. Like you could see it with literally anything. Like there is such little nuance and critical thought that goes into a lot of the discourse and conversations that go on online. Like I feel like when people talk about issues online, they tend to take an either black or white stance. Like it's either this or that. When likely 99.9% .9 of the time, issues are very gray and complex and multifaceted. But because it's more convenient and beneficial commercially to make a headline or an issue sound more one-sided and shocking and problematic than it actually is, that's what the community tends to run with and that's what gets proliferated. And this is why I feel like things sort of taper off from just being about Gen Z to also spreading to millennials because I feel like millennials and a lot of millennial discourse recently, again, no hate to millennials. This isn't, I'm not here to promote the generation wars. However, I have been seeing a lot of millennials sort of rag on Gen Z for just not being media literate, for not being able to critically think, or just being deemed as like not as smart as previous generations. Gen X too, y'all aren't safe. But I feel like across the board, no matter what generation you are, media literacy, and being able to discern and figure out what's BS and what is real, it clocks everybody across the board. Because like the way that I see boomers and Gen X fall for any headline that they see, especially, God forbid it's on Facebook or WhatsApp, like they are running with it like it was written in the Bible itself. <laughs> and that's just crazy to me because you're gonna see something that conspiracy theorist 344 wrote on Facebook and come back and tell the family that we need to start preparing because they said that aliens are about to beam us from the sky and we're media literate, we're the dumb ones, we're gullible. Hmm, right. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and as for millennials, I feel like the things that Gen Z falls for and gets into arguments about are very similar to the things that millennials fall for and gets into arguments about. Because while the education system may have not failed millennials as much and as severely as the education system has failed Gen Z and Gen Alpha, I could hop on Twitter today and see the both of us and get caught up and believe an article or a headline posted by Pop Passe instead of Pop Base because we looked at it too quickly. <laughs> like honestly, no shade to anyone, but I feel like the ability to critically think is becoming more and more scarce of an ability and a resource. And honestly, I'd say that a lot of that is due to the decrease in the attention economy overall. And you may be asking yourself, Remy, what the f the attention economy? That sounds like a buzzword that you commentary YouTubers came up with to make things sound more dramatic. And honestly, it might be. Let me look it up, hold on. No, okay, okay, okay. There is there, there are sources and definitions on the internet, according to Wikipedia. Attention economics is an approach to the management of information that treats human attention as a scarce commodity and applies economic theory to solve various information management problems. That wasn't exactly how I was going to use attention economy. Kind of sort of similar. When I talk about the attention economy, I just mean, see, this is me where my critical thinking and media literacy is being tested. Um, <laughs> but basically what I mean when I talk about the attention economy and specifically the shortening of the attention economy is essentially managing the length of time that people are willing to allocate to things before moving on to the next thing. So kind of like the definition was saying, like the amount of resource, in this sense, resource being attention, someone has to allot to an amount of things. So when I talk about the shortening of the attention economy, I feel like as the content that we consume gets shorter and shorter because things are being promoted to be shorter and shorter, with the rise in popularity and prevalence of short form video, short form literature, making things as snappy and quickly digestible as possible. We're losing recipes here. Well, no, <laughs> because we've gotten so used to consuming things in 15, 30, 60 second intervals that when things get over 90 seconds or when someone talks too slow or if an article is too long, like we just will look away. We will move our attention elsewhere, try to find it in a shorter and more digestible and punchy fashion. And the result of that means that a lot of information is being cut down. A lot of that information being things that would provide that nuance and would give the fuller picture are being lost and being reduced down to things that will catch your attention and grab that attention quickly, which tend to be the most flashy and polarizing things, which again, don't give the full story. And as we've gotten more and more used to this, going backwards becomes a lot harder. Like I feel like you have to train yourself to be able to consume longer and longer content to expand your attention span. Like I'm honestly shocked that y'all be watching these long form commentary videos and podcasts, but can't watch a TikTok or a short video that's longer than 90 seconds. But then again, now that I say it out loud, that might just be because of the way that content is consumed in short form and long form. Like I feel like right now, sorry, I don't mean to call you out. I'm, I genuinely don't mean to call you out. I did this one time before and it really freaked out some of y'all, but I know that some of y'all aren't sitting down and watching this. Like I know that some of y'all are likely watching this or listening to this while you're doing something else. Maybe cooking, cleaning, going on a walk, taking a little poo, like very much passively consuming this content. And actually, if you're just sitting down, you've made it this far and you're genuinely watching, like not doing anything else and watching this video, hats off to you. Yeah, comment down below. Leave a comment right now under this timestamp being like, I am actually presently watching you. And I'm gonna like your comment because 
good for you. Yeah. <laughs> but then I feel like in comparison to short form, I feel like short form content consumption is very much active. Like you are locked and you are right here watching. Like you're not, you are likely not doing anything else while you're watching these. So while it's easier to passively listen or follow along to a longer form video while you're doing something else, that's also keeping your attention going. When you're watching short form, you're locked in so that attention is very much one-on-one. -on -one. Like it needs to be quick and snappy so you can just keep scrolling and scrolling. Interesting hypothesis. But yeah, overall I feel like when talking about the decrease in reading level, media literacy levels, and just academic and intellectual performance, this isn't necessarily as much of a Gen Z and Gen Alpha issue as it is a societal and systemic issue. Like we as Gen Z as well as Gen Alpha are being failed. This isn't to say that we have no accountability in this. Like of course our education at some point is in our own hands, but there are a lot of factors that are also out of our hands in terms of creating widespread accessible solutions. So yeah, I do think it's concerning that Gen Z can't read and I really do feel for teachers trying to do their best, but honestly being way in over their heads because these kids have been failed time after time after time. But I do feel like there is something that has to be done on a higher, more systemic level to be able to compensate and help meet people where they're at and bring them up to speed. Whether that be from the government, whether that be from school boards, whether that be from parents, checking in on their kids more, just something. Cause I know in 20, 30 years, I don't want to be scared to go to my doctor asking me what I think is wrong. <laughs> but yeah, that's gonna do it for this video y'all. And I wanna hear from you. What was or is your experience like going through school right now? Do you as a student feel like you're just being passed along without really getting a hold of the materials? And are you concerned? And for any educators out there, let me know what your experience is. Are you also seeing this trend? And what do you think could help? I wanna hear all your thoughts down in the comment section below. Once again, thanks for watching. Subscribe, leave a like, follow me on my socials at emergency. And until then, I will see you in my next video. Peace.